Um, but it is, of course, election year, though we seem to be in something of a political lull at the moment. Um, but it is going to be a really exciting year, and I'll be honest, when um, uh, the platform uh, and the people who, who run it, and me and my business partner sat down and talked about the platform, we said we want to be humming, we want to be in the landscape by the start of 2023 because it's going to be a very, well, they're all important, a very, very important election and an important political year. So what might it hold? Well, as the curtain goes up, um, we thought we'd ask our mate um, from the Democracy Project, uh, Bryce Edwards, to join us and we'll just do a little bit of a preview, a preview of uh, election year. Bryce, how are you, mate? Thank you for joining us. Happy New Year. You too, Sean. Yes, it is going to be a big year and there's going to be lots of, you know, uh, conflict and excitement. And drama and, and, and BS yeah. and spin. Um, Bryce, yep. first up, Parliament's not sitting at the moment. They're not back till sort of mid-Feb. Is anything really happening politically right now of any significance? Or is everyone, I don't know, girding their loins, gathering their forces and getting ready for Parliament coming back? Yeah, I mean, it's always the case in every January in New Zealand. I think that this is more the case in New Zealand than probably anywhere else in the world that January really is the silly season and uh, most of the media are on holiday, the politicians are on holidays, the staffers are on holiday. They wait really for a few set pieces to occur. Uh, you have the, the first cabinet meeting of the year, which I think is not until the 25th, so That's not a week right. away. Yep. And then, of course, the Prime Minister appears after that and announces a few things. We've got Ratna year, of course, and Waitangi. Yes, and then we have, we have the Māori you know, celebrations or commemorations that are the big part of the, the relaunch of the year. And, yeah, Ratana and then Waitangi. I think this time around it might be a bit different. I suspect that... Because there are going to be a lot of debate around issues of ethnicity, race this year, that the government are going to pull back a bit on those events. They don't want to be so associated with Ratana and Waitangi as in the past, and they'll take a much more low-key approach to those things. Because Waitangi be dress traditionally always seems to me, Bryce, such a crazy way to kick off the political year and the year of news. Because it is, yeah. it now sees just inherently negative or divisive. Though, and I've ne I've got to admit, I've never been to Waitangi on Waitangi Day. People who do go oh. tell me the actual mood on the ground is quite different than what is highlighted by the media. Yeah, I, I went there a few years ago, the, the same year COVID hit, and oh, it was great. Um, I, I really enjoyed it, and I would recommend other people go. And it's it's fascinating. Um, and yeah, there wasn't a lot of conflict there um, but this year I think there could be um, there's a lot of um, aggravations at the moment from all different sides whether it's the anti-vaxxers through to Maori nationalists um, through to people concerned that this government has been too uh, dominated by its Maori caucus um, it just is a bit of a, a storm waiting for waiting to break um, yeah to go uh, wrong uh, uh, yeah. Okay. interesting so, just before Christmas just before the break not highly reported was the fact that it appears that co-governance is not being prioritised by the Prime right. Minister in terms of the agenda this year, that there has been a recognition from the wider Labour Party that the attitude to co-governance is a political negative to the general electorate. This is absolutely the case, and I think it's probably a bit too late for the government to try and put it back in the box, Yeah, because they've already sort of progressed that agenda quite far, and I think it's been one of their big negatives that um, a lot of people are highly suspicious of what kind of governance means in terms of Three Waters, the Murray Health Authority, just lots of other areas, and um, you know, so this has already happened. Yeah. Um, 
Yes, it's paused, and the government has to, at some stage, respond to the um, the report that's been developed on this, on how to progress it. Um, but they've decided to put that on hold until after the election, and that's smart, of course, because no good can come of that report, I believe, and mm. how the government responds to it. Mm. But all no good in terms of the electoral public response to that. But I think the public's also going to be suspicious that it's been delayed to after the election that um, you know maybe there's an agenda being developed behind the scenes that um, there won't be a mandate for in the mm. election should the Labour government be re-elected but they'll just push on with it and so I, on the campaign trail you know in the debates I believe there will be lots of hard questions put to uh, Labour politicians and the Prime Minister about the co-governance agenda yeah. and that's Really, they just want to... And they're not backing they down on three waters or five waters, which has no. become the... And I drove up the country and, geez, the number of farms I saw or places I saw on main roads with stop three waters signs and banners, a lot of them homemade, um, quite remarkable. That seems to be the policy that will not be compromised. That's maybe the Maori caucus's bottom line, Bryce. Yes, and from the government's point of view, they've got that out of the way. They passed the legislation ah. back last year. Yeah. They want the debate finished on that. Um, they you know, want to present it as a fait accompli. You know, mm. There's nothing to argue about anymore, but it will drag on. And I, I, one of the more interesting parts, I think, will be scrutiny on national. You know, They say they're going to repeal it, but what are they going to replace it with? Yeah. Um, and I think that also sums up the year that national, you know, they, they've been a very good opposition. And under Luxon, they have, you know... Well, they're back in the game, big time. The, ...the government, but they haven't really told us what they are going to do themselves. What's their alternative vision? What's their alternative policies? Yeah. Um, you know, they, they say that's all going to come, but I'm quite suspicious that Luxon is just going to continue to run a very small... Vanilla campaign, yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. and... I don't think that's good for democracy. I don't think it's good to elect a, uh, a change of government without really knowing what, what you're changing to. What it's going to do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bryce, a cabinet reshuffle, when's that due for or expected? Well, it's, we, we don't know exactly. It's late January, and of course, we've got the cabinet's first cabinet meeting, I think, in a week's time. So this time next week. I suspect it will be after that. Um, so yeah, in a week's time, I think we'll, we'll hear about that. No one knows exactly, you know, what to expect. Um, we we'll, might see a few more retirements. Yeah. Um, Pene Harari is one person that is being uh, rumoured that he um, he's had enough. Um, he might step down. Um, we know, of course, that Nanaia Mahuta is widely speculated to be losing the local government portfolio yeah. as a as a way of trying to deal with that three waters yeah. backlash. Yeah. Um, I, look, I don't, I don't know. Where hey, what about what about all? Willie Jackson and broadcasting? Because, of course, the pick is that the merger will be shelved. Um, yeah. Do you put poor old Chris uh, Hipkins in there to clean that mess up? Well, there's only one Chris Hipkins, and he's to deal with uh, police yeah. and you no know, crime, and probably about five other portfolios. Um, so I don't know who they would replace Willie Jackson with. I think they will really keep Jackson in there, but just tell him to um, pull his head in. Go on holiday. Go on holiday for the rest of the year, and mm. the less we hear from you, the better. I think mm. would be Ardern's. Mm. Um, instructions from him, and yes, that merger between RNZ, TVNZ is, is, is going to either be put on hold, cancelled, or highly modified. Yeah. Um, it's, hard, it's unlikely to go ahead. Yeah, hard to justify $750 million expenditure with uh, no real KPIs uh, there. Look, uh, I guess also, and as you say, in an election year, and I think this is the media's job as well as to us, National, what it offers as an alternative instead of just criticising what, what we have at present. Let's look at the minor parties. It seems to me the Greens are in some political peril. Uh, as we go back, really, to a Labour national narrative, a more traditional narrative for this election, they are in danger of becoming somewhat irrelevant. But meantime, we look at ACT, who I think could have their best election ever this year if they play their cards right. 
and they do offer the alternative and the clear alternatives that National might be reluctant to. Yes. I mean, let's just do a quick deal with the Greens. They're, they're doing very well in the polls, you know, generally about 10%. So it's, it's hard to necessarily say... Oh, no, I don't think they'll... Yeah, they, they, um, they won't, but they won't you're lose. But you're right that they're going to be less reluctant, uh, less um, central to the campaign. And I still think that the Greens are highly volatile. Um, you know, the last two election campaigns, 2017 to um, 2020, they've had disaster campaigns where they've gone into the um, the year with quite good support, but they've had some unforced errors. You know, whether it's Materia Toure and her speech about yeah, um, uh, yeah. welfare, um, James Shaw and his private school funding, the um, um, uh, the so James Shaw been, leadership challenge where nobody yeah, challenged during so the leadership challenge. It, well, those tensions are still there in the Greens, yeah, and. They have a tendency to self sabotage in election years. So yeah. I still wouldn't be surprised if, you know, drama comes their way again. But you're right, they're not going to be terribly central to this campaign. And the more it's looking like Labour's struggling, the less Greens are going to be able to say, vote for us to, um, you know, give Labour a spine yeah. and to uh, make sure. So I don't know, they're not going to be central, no. Yeah. Um, but they'll, they'll probably do well because. The Greens always do relatively well when Labor's polling poorly. You, yeah. you see a lot of left-wing people thinking, well, ah, Labor's yeah. a bit stuffed. Um, Labor's not really doing traditional left-wing things like they should. Yeah. Let's vote for the Greens. But, but, but ACT, I think you're absolutely right. That's where a lot of the scrutiny is going to be this year, and, and rightly so. Um, you know, people are going to say, well, they are going to be a coalition partner, and they're going to be quite a sizable one in national. Yeah. They're not just going to be a small um, 5% party. They could be a 10 or 15% percent party, yeah. um, party. And they could be, you know, David Seymour could quite rightly be demanding the finance uh, you know, role in the new government. They could be demanding all sorts of key policies um, and, and roles. We need to know what they are and what act would be, uh, would be, what would the bottom lines be for, for Seymour? Um, and how much are they going to dominate uh, a Luxembourg-led government? And, um, you know, and, and that's MMP. Uh, uh, there's nothing wrong with them dominating, you know, but well, let's know what it would mean. And, of course, National's going to be running scared about that. They don't want to be seen as... Um, reliant. As enabling... Uh, 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 yeah, and reliant on what might be seen as a far-right party mm. or economically, you know, yeah. a more radical party. Yeah. So, yeah, and uh, Labour will be wise to target act, saying vote Lux and you get um, these these radical policies. And that's that's all fair game in politics, I guess. Mm. Now, what about winning? And, and I'm going to make my probably single prediction for the year, and it's not yep. wishful thinking, it's an assessment of what I see and I think the difficulties is. I think New Zealand First is going to stall out between 4 and 5%, but not get to 5%. And we'll spend a lot of time this year saying, oh, is he there? Is he going to get there? And I don't think he will in the end. And that's the only prediction okay. really at the moment I'm prepared to make. I also suspect that he's going to get pretty loud around Waitangi Day and those issues of race because he sees that as an area where he can go much harder than almost anyone else. Yep. Yeah, I don't know why you think um, that they won't make 5%. Um, I think people, too many people, people remember who put Jacinda Ardern in power. And I yep. think he's ruled out going with Labour, so the old he can't play the old game. Yeah, no, I think it might be powerful that he's ruling out Labour this election campaign. I think he can't play that trick of um, we'll decide who we you know yeah. who we put in government after the election campaign because exactly why, what you just said, yeah. that people don't trust him for that, and. He's more likely to see the way the wind's blowing and say, well, Labour's unpopular. Um, yeah. And he'll but if you want someone on, to keep National honest, you've got the ACT party. Yeah, and, and maybe that will work for ACT. But um, I think New Zealand First can um, potentially win over some more sort of centrist or even maybe... He's got the anti-vaxxers all to class. himself. No one wants them. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
I think there is a lot of anger out there in the electorate and a lot of it around some of the more, I guess, what you would call woke concerns or the woke agenda. Of no, the not what I would call. They are the around... woke concerns and the woke agenda, <laughs> right, okay? Yes, <laughs> and around ethnicity. And, yeah, I, I think he's well-placed, as is Shane Jones, who yeah. I think is the major talent. And he might be the one that... He has been... Really... Look, I haven't seen anything that has looked particularly like Shane Jones and Winston working together, though. No, that is a that is a bit of a puzzle, but oh, I think he might well be the the main person representing New Zealand first at this. Yeah, okay. This campaign. And, and I guess we'll we'll see what happens yeah. at his pre Waitangi party, which I've never been invited to. Shane, if you're listening, uh, the pre Waitangi <laughs> Day party uh, up northward. It seems everyone I've ever met to in political reporting's been to, and I've never been invited. It's probably one of those Murray things. You just need to turn up with a six pack. Of very expensive craft beer to get in the to get in, Bryce. Hey, Bryce, yeah. we will check in with you regularly during yep. the course of the year. It is uh, nice to get a seen setter from you, though. Um, and as you say, we're slightly in silly season, but it's going to kick off um, pretty soon, sooner than we think, maybe than we want. Uh, Bryce, thank you very much indeed. That is Bryce Edwards. He's a political lecturer at Vic Uni and runs a great outfit called uh, the Democracy Project. All sorts of research and interest in um, in the political process. Um, of course, we didn't get on to mention the economy and, most importantly, this year, the looming crisis over the price of craft beer. And I tell you what, I, I think there's probably panic buying in Aro Valley today and the more in Grayland of craft beer by all the wokesters, uh, right, who I don't know, they wear... I must have a think about that. What, what typifies a wokester in New Zealand? 